So I'll get started. So this is just a, a short presentation. Um, my name's Andrew Frame. I work for um, uh, Sci5. I'm based in the UK. I was the first UK employee. I joined um, around the middle of last year. Um, but I've had 25 plus years experience in the IP licensing business, um, working for other I IP companies um, in the UK. Um, so Sci5 is um, you know, fairly mature now. Um, we're still classed as a startup, um, but we have a very large, broad portfolio of RISC-V based processes. I'm going to focus this morning's talk on the vector processes and just give you a very brief introduction. Um, if you have more questions, then we have um, a, a pod just over to the left, my left here. Um, feel free to pop by any time during the day over the next three days. Um, and we'll answer any of your questions. Um, and if we can't answer them, then we can get the answers from the UK or from the US um, support team. So um, you may have heard of RISC-V and Sci-5 um, already. So Sci-5 has been fairly well established in, um, in processor designs for you know, maybe five or six years already. And we had a lot of um, processes in the deeply embedded space. And over the last 18 months or so, we've broadened our portfolio to include new product lines. And we've classified the, these under the brands performance and intelligence. Now, we've actually got a number of vector processes which cross over these different um, 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 uh, product lines effectively. And what we're trying to do is um, look at you know, where, where, you're when, where you're wanting to use vector applications and put vector, vector applications in the market. You need to basically use the right processor with the right power performance area capabilities for the market that you're actually targeting. So we've used different vector lengths on our different processors. Um, and um, we've also used, um, we've also extended the instructions, the vector instructions with our own custom instructions to add an extra capabilities in the AI ML area. So what is it that's actually changing and, and evolving in the vector market? Um, there is a big drive towards making um, more simpler systems. As a design engineer, you actually want to build the simplest systems and get to market as fast as possible. You also need to you know, follow on the risk philosophy, the risk five philosophy, where we have extensibility, where with the risk five um, uh, kind of base model of instructions and then the ability to add on extensions. So you really get to use systems that are optimized for the application space that you want to use them in. And portability, so being able to migrate your code from different designs to another is, is, is really useful because you really want to make sure that your software investment, your investment in software and libraries, et cetera, and applications is as broadly usable as possible across as many markets as possible because software engineering time is probably some of the most expensive time to actually put in place. In particular, um, of interest to us is um, kind of neural network models where people are using um, custom accelerators to um, accelerate AI and ML um, marketplaces and applications, et cetera. So what you need to be able to do is to be able to keep up with these rapidly expanding and extending um, neural network models and be able to support the newest models as, as they come to market. And so you need to be able to be able to you know, make use of the flexible systems that you have in place to be able to support these, these new neural network models. And then, obviously, uh, underpinning um, RISC-V is, is the open source systems um, and the open source nature of RISC-V. Um, and you know, the, the applicability and the accessibility to applications that the, the, the network of open source community is actually developing for you. Um, because obviously, once again, this is a, a time to market factor for your designs. So, so what is it then around RISC-V vectors in particular that make it so appealing? Um, first of all, it starts off, it's a, it's a single simple vector ISA that can work with um, many, many different data types and different um, vector register widths. And that's, that's crucial because what you found in, um, in, modern, in modern applications that maybe you're around at the moment where they've used SIMD, um, whenever the vector length has to be widened, then what happens is your instruction set has to be increased. And you also have to be able to support um, um, backwards compatibility. And so what happens with these um, other architectures is you effectively get massive instruction bloat. And anytime you've got extra instructions in your architecture, that is always going to be a power drain. And it's always also taking up area that you necessarily don't want to, want to, to put on your system. The big, one of the big advantages of RISC-V vectors is it's vector length agnostic. So 
whatever you write, whenever you write code for a RISC-V vector architecture, um, it will, the same code will run no matter what vector length registers have been built into the system. So what it will do is, if you have wider vectors, then effectively your system will be more efficient because it will make use of those wider vectors when it can. If you're using narrower vectors because your application space determines that you need um, um, you know, more power efficient systems, less area, less, um, less, less um, uh, overall system resources, then the same instruction code, so talking about software portability, that, that's once again um, reiterating the message here. Um, you want to be able to take advantage of design flexibility. So as your application or your, your, your products as they go to market, what you'll need to do is you maybe start off with a, an introductory product and then maybe go on further and further and widen your vector length with your, um, uh, um, uh, with your, you know, your product definition, your product portfolio. So what you want to be able to do is reuse your application code and your library code that you've invested your time and money in. Um, and as more and more neural networks are evolved, then you need to be able to have the design flexibility to add those models um, as, as you need into your um, AI uh, systems, et cetera. And we also support, so the RISC-V architecture supports um, something called ELMUL, which allows you to concatenate registers together um, and basically make use of even wider registers. Obviously, you're still limited by your overall register hardware, but the software has a lot more flexibility with this ELMUL capability. Um, because um, the RISC-V architecture was designed to work on any kind of system, so whether it be an embedded system or an open operating system, for example, with Linux support, then you know with Linux you can take advantage of the open source software and the virtual memory support to be able to support really large data sets if your memory model uh, or your neural network um, determines that. And then also the, 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 the guys who, who built the RISC-V architecture uh, the ve vector extension, they, they wanted to have support for as many different vector data types and sizes as possible um, right from the onset. Um, now, there will always be cases where people will want to extend the architecture to, for, for specific implementations, but what they've tried to do is build something that's a very good baseline, baseline structure. And as you'll see with one of our products, we've extended that slightly specifically for AI and ML inferencing. So the first product I'll mention briefly today is the P270. Effectively, this was launched um, around the same time as our other um, product, the X280. Um, these are 64-bit Linux-based systems. Um, the particular difference between the P270 and the um, X280 is the different vector length, the, the, the width of the registers. So the P270 is 256 bits. Now, the key part of that is if you need a very, you know, if you're, if you're very, um, if your system re requirements re require the smallest possible system but still supporting vectors, then this is the product that you would choose from that. Um, it's an eight-stage dual issue out of in-order processor. So you get in very good performance um, and, and running Linux on top of this. And we've built this, this we've architected this so it can run actually eight cores um, in parallel in a multi-core system. So the slight differences between the 270 and the X280. So actually at the show this week, we're going to launch our next version of the X280. So this is the kind of hot off the press information that you won't have seen anywhere else. And um, the key difference between the 270 and the X280 is the vector length, as I've said. So this is a 512 um, bit vector register length, but it also has the sci-fi intelligence extensions. So these are particular um, extensions that we've added that enable um, specific AI and ML models to actually um, execute far more effectively and efficiently. And I'll show you an example of this in a couple of slides time. Um, the X280 has actually been really, really successful. Um, it's kind of, it, it's taken us a little bit by surprise in its market applicability. Um, there is a, a, an area of our website dedicated to RISC-V vectors. So there's four or five different articles on that which explain where the X280 is going into different markets and, and how it's kind of unique in the market. So please you know, feel free to, to look at that information um, when you get um, back after the show. Um, we find that the X280 is being used in, as both a, a standalone processor but also used as a companion processor. In standalone systems, what you'll find is people are using the vector um, extensions and been able to design out effectively where they've had some custom, maybe small DSPs to do dedicated activities. So the X280 has meant that you've been able to simplify your design by removing some 
dedicated DSP capabilities. Now, where um, customers are actually, actually you know, implementing far more complex neural network systems, they're, they're a little bit more complex for a, a standard um, architecture to, to, come, come, you know, to cope with. So even though the vector instructions are very efficient, sometimes um, your application might need um, a dedicated accelerator still. And this is where you get back into the more complex designs. Um, so one way we've tried to mitigate the issues around this is we've introduced something called the Vector Coprocessor Extension Interface. And what this allows you to do is, instead of having to write separate application code using a separate toolkit for your own custom accelerator, what you can do now is actually have your instruction code running through the Sci-5 um, instruction code, and it passes the instructions over to the, um, to the accelerator directly. The benefits of this are you're using standard tool chains and you're basically making use of shared resources now so you don't need to maybe necessarily copy the cache architecture on your neural network accelerator because you can make use of the processes resources. Once again, it's all about simplification, extensibility and, and minimizing your PPA um, consistently. For the first time on a multi-core vector-based system, we have introduced WorldGuard security. Um, and also, we've taken the opportunity to actually m maximize our tops, um, our tops performance by enabling systems to be built up to 16 cores in a multi-core, multi-cluster system. So this is also new in the release that's just gone out um, this week. Basically, it enables you to do far more efficient performance scaling um, um, in a single core complex um, to, 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 to meet the needs of the applications that you're targeting. So this is an example of where we've taken a neural network model and you can see the difference in performance from using pure scalar, so maybe something like a, an essential U7 core, um, which is you know, eight stage um, pipeline, et cetera, high performance processor. Um, if you then um, move this to a, um, an X280, then we've seen 24 times performance of the vector processor over a scalar processor. So you can see now why vector is actually so important for particular types of applications. Um, with the Sci-5 intelligence extensions, which are the extensions we specifically targeted for AI and ML on the X280, you can then get a further six times improvement in your performance. Um, and these were all done on um, mobile net um, V1 inference. You can see the details at the bottom of the slide for the exact specification that was used. I've not got my glasses on, so I can't read what's on my screen. <laughs> okay, um, so I mentioned that you know SIMD's been around for a while. There are a, you know there's other um, um, incumbents who have introduced SIMD systems, um, and and what you might actually have is some code that you've actually written in SIMD. So one of the ways that we've made it simpler. Um, in order for, to, to kind of pick up on RISC-V vectors is we've produced um, um, an application um, in order for basically to take um, SIMD code and convert it to um, uh, RISC-V vector instructions. So this, this will give you a good head start of when you're moving code from previous architectures um, and it, for if you want to use RISC-V, for example. Um, we also have um, done lots of work in LLVM for auto vectorization. So this should simplify your system design as well. Um, if, you, if you're really going for that optimal performance, then the RISC-V vector it, ISA is very simple as well. And you, could, you, know, you can really do the down, get down in the weeds and write instructions yourself for more optimal code. But theoretically, you shouldn't need to do that. These high level programming languages can do, can do most of the grunt work for you. So finally, um, with the X280, we've done a lot of work um, to support TensorFlow Lite. Um, so we're constantly working on adding more models and making them um, far easier to port um, to, to, the, to, the, to the systems that people are using. Um, we, they're already <clears throat> um, highly optimized um, to, to run on the X280. And they'll give you good examples of starting points because maybe it's the case that your, not, your model is not exactly the same. But what you'll find is one that's very similar out of TensorFlow Lite and it'll give you a good starting point, get you to market faster, et cetera. So finally, um, just to give you a kind of heads up that we're not finished with RISC-V vectors. Um, we're still continuing to invest a lot of our engineering time on bringing new vector products to market. Um, we've, at, at the end of last year, we talked about the P650 um, as our uh, next uh, high-end applications processor. Um, we're actually 
looking to add vectors to that kind of architecture as well. So we'll have out of order um, vectors. So we'll probably be the first to market with an out of order vector processor. Um, we're also looking at um, broadening the, the red, red register width, the vector register width even further. So specific applications like signal process, image signal processing could benefit from wider register length. So that's also something we're trying to do. Um, we're still continuing to work on our essential product line. So we're, 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 you know, we have this continuous evolution and revolution um, in terms of you know, how we update all of our products. We're not necessarily doing it the same way that we used to, so it allows us to, to target our resources in specific areas. But you know, we're always looking at, at, at where we need to um, up, up rev all of our products. And then you can see um, just on the right of the slide, we're also investing heavily in automotive. So we announced our intention to work on automotive products. Um, maybe 12 months ago, we announced a, um, a relationship with, um, with Renesis. And we're, we're gonna be talking about this a lot more later on this year. So um, please, keep, um, please keep in touch if you're very interested in functional safety um, for your application space, et cetera. So I'll finish up there. Um, thank you for, um, for listening. I um, hope you have a good rest of the show. If you've got any questions, then we can take them now um, or just come and visit us at our booth um, at your leisure. Thank you.